All right, what is going on, everybody? Uh, Kevin with Buffalo Pinball here, joined by Eric Minier from Jersey Jack Pinball. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, See you, hey, what's going on, man? So, he couldn't be here in person because of COVID-19, and I couldn't go there because of COVID-19 uh, to do the reveal like we have for the past three Jersey Jack games, but what's this? Holy crap, it's- What is this? It, it's the first Guns N' Roses limited edition off the line, shipped out, uh, the first one that's going to be seen by anybody outside of Jersey Jack, is that right? That is correct. You are the first person outside of our company who has seen this game. And I haven't seen it yet, but that's the thing. So I'm, right. I'm unboxing a game here that I've never seen before. I said the only pictures what? I've seen are the one of you holding the back of the play field and the, the yep. one that came out today where you're like looking over the wires. Right, and we are recording this on October 1st. October 1st. <laughs> yes, so when you see this, it's going to be a few days in the future, but we're shooting it in the past. Right. Uh, but what's wild about this, and I, I, I was talking to Kevin when this idea came up, the idea that a pinball nut like Kevin, who's so into this, this world that we're all obsessed with, I think is going to be one of the first people, and probably one of the only people to ever experience being a huge pinball fan and unboxing a game, a brand new game that they've literally never seen pictures of or know anything about. We can share the experience of how I, this came into my possession today too, because that was crazy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, right. Uh, right. We're, so this is Thursday before the reveal. This is the, the second day of JJP, right? So you, you, posted the, right. you posted the back of the play field yesterday. Today's the day we saw the, the shot of the underside with some of the wires on it. So I went, mm -hmm. This was this game was originally supposed to be delivered today. I got the call from uh, the delivery company that said, "Oh, and so the phone rang. I picked it up. It's FedEx. They're going to drop it off." And they're like, uh, "Hi, yeah, we're uh, scheduled to drop off a machine to you. And um, what? Uh, so we're going to. It's got a lift gate. It's residential delivery. We're going to bring it back on next Thursday." I was like, "No, <laughs> this game is supposed <laughs> to be here today. Next Thursday is way too late." So. Uh, I, I, I pushed back and they said, uh, well, let me talk to some folks. So she, she put me on hold, talked to some folks and came back. She's like, oh, Monday or Tuesday, is that work? I was like, how about if I come pick it up? So I went out and I rented a van. I went to you all, rented a van, grabbed, <laughs> went to the docks. They brought it down on a forklift. We put it in the van and I brought it home. And, but the funny thing is I put, the, I put uh, the radio on on the way home and I, I shot a little no video way. of this. And at, no as I'm driving home, Guns N' Roses November Rain comes on the radio. <laughs> so I got a video of me in the car, with the, in the van, with the, the game in the back, GNR. With the new inbox picture, new inbox video, like of, 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 of the GNR yeah, in the yeah. back. You can't really see it because it's, it's behind like this wall in the van, but it's there. Sure. It's there. It's back. It's there. So right. it was kind of a, a perfect moment. What do you say? Anything else you want to say before we get to this? Um, well, in typical buffalo and jjp stream fashion i will introduce the beer that i'm oh there you today. go um this is a bell's double hearted ipa which is an 11 percent alcohol beer and it's delicious all right and i in tra Cheers. traditional buffalo kevin stream fashion i'm drinking a big old glass of water because i'm gonna be unboxing a pinball machine and uh right. it's it's uh it's gonna work me work up a sweat i think but i got this down to a science oh man i'm excited and uh I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how I do this when I go solo on, on setting up a pinball stream or a pinball machine. Uh, I'm very lucky in that I have a ground floor game room. I don't have to mess around, so I went and I picked this game up, brought it out on a dolly, wheeled it right into the game room, and plopped it down. So uh, let's get to this. I'm stoked. Can't wait to see it. So the first thing is you want to come back over here, and there's a giant uh, bag on the side that says "Attention Consumer, Open This Package First." So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna open this package first. Alright. Well, there's a couple things in here. What do we got? What's inside there, Kev? Let's see. So should I go big envelope first or little envelope? Uh big, big envelope. envelope. Okay. Okay, what's in here? Uh, hey, unpacking and setup instructions for your Jersey Jack Pinball machine. There you go. There we go. I've done this a few times, but if you've never done this, follow this. Yep. 
are the, right. are because okay. the way that we've designed our boxing, um, you need to follow the instructions. Personally, the way I used to unbox games is I would flip them on end mm -hmm. on, on the truck side only and cut the top of the box and like pull the stuff out. Uh, but with the modern packing system that we use in order to reduce the amount of damage that could potentially occur in shipping, we pack our bag, our legs on the top of the game. Yeah. So if you were to flip the game down and try to open the box, your legs would all fall. Ah, yes. And you don't want that. In the little envelope, and the main reason people must pay attention to consumer open this first is because that is... Da, 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 da. I'll bring it up to the camera. Oh, it's your LE flag. Limited edition nameplate. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. So I got number 388. There you go. So when you open up your game, you're like, where's my plaque? It's, it's already, it's already. So uh, if you don't have Eric personally helping you set up a game, uh, follow the instructions. Or just give me a call. Yeah. You know, we can... He's a pretty responsive guy. All right. Anything else <laughs> besides that uh, that we should consider before I start ripping into this thing? Um, always check on delivery. Um, we have postings all over the box mm -hmm. um, because we, we deal with third-party distribution and third-party um, shipping companies. Check your box for damage. Check, 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 check. I mean, it is a $10,000 piece of equipment inside there. So if there's any potential damage, you know, pierced holes in the box, crushed damage, things like that, you know, these games are insured. You must, 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 upon delivery, before you sign for anything, make sure your game is intact. Otherwise, there's nothing we can do and there's nothing you can do. Uh, the shipping company will not be held responsible if you sign that piece of paper without inspecting. Yeah, and I was holding my breath, waiting for this thing to come down the ramp that it wouldn't have a giant hole in the side of it. Right. Because, oh uh, God, it's just it just hurts my soul when I see these shipping, you know, shipping horror stories because you know I I, I probably personally helped build your game, Kevin. Woo. Like I've been out on the line because you know we've been building these games for a couple weeks now. I've been out on the line, like working with our testers and working with the manufacturers. And I'm personally, you know, built a whole bunch of the assembly fixtures for putting together the mechs and stuff like that. So, like, when I see a game because some jag off driving a forklift wasn't paying attention and drove it through the side of, of my creation, it just, oh, God, it hurts. I know. I saw the guys, they were like flying around the docks. I was like, oh, my God, please, when you have the game on there, do not go that fast. And thankfully, thankfully well, he didn't. He was, the, he did all right. And he helped me. He helped me get it in the in the van too, so we did all right. So, cool. so should, cool. without right. further ado, let's cut the straps. Let's do all it. All right, here we go. So I got I got a utility knife that I use for this, and just, yeah. there's one. Those at home, the outer straps strap the box to the pallet. Um, if you're in a home environment, you might take it off the pallet first by cutting the outer set of straps. And you can slide it off the pallet and um, around that way. The inner set of straps holds the box down to the shipping plate, which is a piece of wood uh, with foam packing on the bottom. So we got the one with from, so it's not attached to the pallet anymore. I just wheeled it right in on the pallet. Correct. Um, now yep. we're going to take this one off. here open her up on top that's the best way to do it don't try to just slide the box off technically the top of the box would slide off right now but if you do that you're again potentially going to spill your legs out all over the place and potentially damage them. oh man Whew. see like here's what's exciting kevin so, doesn't even know what the armor color i don't know what the armor is. color is i don't know what the art looks like i oh dude <laughs> oh boy oh. I want to save this moment for a moment. I just like, I'm going to see legs first though, right? You're going to see what the first? Legs? You're going to see the legs okay, first. Okay, legs. I'm yeah. not going to see the game yet. Nope. Got it. So we got a piece of cardboard on top. I see some leg levelers and the thing to put the, the back box on. So we got that. Yep. And a little tool that we sent okay. in case you have no tools at all. Um, you will still be able to assemble your game. We have a little tool that uh, will put the leg bolts on that will allow you to unscrew the back plate for the uh, power cord. Um, so that tool should, 
will uh, you can set up your game with only that tool. Um, oh. I recommend getting real tools because it's not fun to set up your game with only that tool. But if you're in a bind, you left your toolbox somewhere else or whatever, that tool will set up your game. There it is. Nice. Yeah, it's even got the JJP logo on there. It's looking good. Sure does. Woo. All right, so leg wobbler, super exciting. What else can we sneak out of here? Uh, foam block. Oh man, look at that! Dude, that is sweet. Look at that color. Look at that color. That is, mm. Mm, it's like candy. It is. Ooh. What color? So what color is that uh, in official like powder coat color terms? Um, in official powder coat color terms, that is. Illusion Cinnamon. Woo! It's looking good. All right, let's get the rest of them out of here. So for all of you who are sending your coin doors out to be powder <laughs> that's, that's the color you want. You know want. there's at least one guy doing that, right? Right. <laughs> um, so um, when we put the leg levelers on, should they go all the way in to start and adjust all from there? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And actually we want to put a nut on first. Put the nut on first. Yep. So this is a. That's the uh, the the pro tip is the nut goes on the bottom, not on the top. So nut goes ahead. Right. And then after you get your legs set to the right height, turn that nut all the way up to tighten it against the bottom of the leg, and that um, reduces the amount of sway. That your game will have. Pro tip here, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Hold on to the, hold on to the foot and spin the leg. Oh, spin the leg. Uh, I gotta make sure I'm doing it the right way now. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. There you go. Whip that Woo! thing around, and it's quick. This, this is from this is from a guy that's done this a few times. <laughs> I've, done, I've set up a couple pinball machines in my life. <laughs> I have too, but I've never, sure done you were that, there. I've never done that. One. Yeah, I've been there for a few too. I'm sure you were there when we did the uh, when we did the Wonkas, and I set those up at record <laughs> <Dude>. speed. <laughs> when you were like hauling them around the the, the back, <laughs> you were just right, like the back of the. I, we complex. had them on like like roller skates, and you were skating them around the room. It was great. I was like, this is a guy that just gets it done. I appreciate that. And I'm in like a friggin' suit and dress pants, right? <laughs> right. The walk, the walk at premiere, oh my God. sweating like a hog because I, I just set up five games. All right. So the game, due to um, wanting to prevent as much damage as possible, we ship the game inside of a huge uh, bag. So the artwork might not show up very easily right now when you take that top tray off. Okay. Is gonna have a clear bag uh, over the top of it. Let's see if I can get this. We'll see what we can see. All right. Oh, I see Guns N' Roses logo. Hey, there it's you confirmed, go. ladies and gentlemen. As if it wasn't confirmed from the outside of the box. Doubly confirmed in here. It's a Guns N' Roses. It is Guns N' Roses. I see. I see some floral stuff. Some some blood dripping down. I see. Uh, yeah. So not a lot to see here just yet. Uh, so I should take this part out now, the, uh, the cardboard. You can take that, yep, that cardboard filler out. Yep. Uh, next, it really depends on the height of your ceilings. Mm -hmm. If you can slide the box off straight up, you can. I should be able to. If not, take your knife and just cut down the dotted line where we indicate. Right here. Yep. All right, I'm going to see if I can. Yeah, no, it's made my ceilings. All right, let's cut it. All right, now here is the magic moment where you get to see the side of the cabinet. All right, here we go. Ooh, baby. I can't decide how I want to how I want to set this up. <laughs> Dude, I want you guys to see Pull it. Pull the box away with your eyes closed, yeah. and then <laughs> come back to it. Yet. And pull the bag off too. Pull the bag off without it. Without no, oh, I already looked. I stuck a piece. Dude, look at that! Wow! Wow, that's awesome. 
So are these actual Guns N' Roses tour posters? Those are actual Guns N' Roses tour posters. Wow. All right. Let's go. Let's show you that. Show you guys this. So tell me about who did the art for these posters. So the art for those posters were done independently by dozens of different artists for Guns N' Roses. Um, they did a unique tour poster for nearly every tour location they did during the Not In This Lifetime tour. That is 199 different concerts before um, COVID started. So before 2019, um, they played in 199 concerts. Nearly all of those concert venues had their own custom poster. So even though they played in Chicago like two or three times, they had a unique Chicago poster for each time they played. So I was introduced to the artist who did the majority of the Guns N' Roses tour posters. His name is Arian Bueller. And Arian and I worked together on a cabinet package for the limited edition, which is what you're looking at now. Arian personally did many of the posters you see, but not all of them. So Guns N' Roses owns the rights to their tour posters. We were allowed to use all of the tour posters from their repertoire. And Arian took them and put them in a collage together. Um, and what's great about having Arian's input on this art package uh, and the way that he styled it and put it together, he is very in touch with the um, the poster, com the collector community that collect these lithograph posters for Guns N' Roses. So like, it's it's his work, right? That most of these people are collecting, but he follows those threads and those forums where people are searching out to find these posters. And so he knows which ones were ranked the best, which ones are best liked by the GNR community. And he put those featured on this game. And what's great is on the right side of the back box, so which I think you're looking at now, yep. uh, there you see a Falcon uh, oh, from, the Dubai, from the Dubai show. And that lithograph is literally unobtainium. <laughs> cannot get that lithograph it does not exist in the wild there were proofs of it that were sent out uh, but the poster got somehow lost the shipment of posters never made it to dubai you were not able to buy that lithograph while you were at the show so gnr super fans are like you know selling their kidney in order to get that poster and because we worked with arian he was like, Eric, this poster is one that the GNR superfans are going to love because they can't get it anywhere else. We're like, That's great, man. Let's put it on our game. And the rest of the posters you see are done by various artists from the GNR poster um, group. And um, a lot of them are the highest ranked ones. And many of those were Aryans, but Aryan is very humble about his work. He didn't want to include just his posters in the collage. So wow, these are these are these are amazing. I, I'm just looking at it, picking out different things as I look at it. There's like a, a BMX looking one. There's a skateboarding kind of one. Man, there's lots of lots to take in here. Lots to appreciate. This is one you're gonna want at the end of your row if you, if you can if you get accommodated for sure. Absolutely. But Absolutely. Is there a different finish on these too? Because it seems super glossy. Even cause... it is a different finish. Okay. So we put a protective, um, basically a mylar layer on top of the artwork so that there is no chance fingerprints and um and such will rub away the art so i don't, I don't have to take those little awesome. plastic things and cover up the flipper button area nope wow. nope it's a very glossy high sheen um protective layer that was built into the decal amazing all right let's put some legs on this sucker and set it up shall we put some legs right. on yep so uh, bolts are in the uh, in the leg holes, so you got to take those out. Right. And you want to leave the felt there, right? Right. And the reason that we include the leg bolts already installed in the game um, has a lot to do with just verifying for the customer that these leg bolts are one there, right? We never want to ship a game without leg bolts, so we put them in. Two, making sure they work. Um, you know, they go in that the, the threads aren't cross threaded or there's no ground braid covering them or anything like mm -hmm. that. So install them ahead of time. That way it's a foolproof plan that they work, they're installed and they're you know ready to go. Because I've had that too where I get a game 
and you go to, it's just like the thread won't go in for whatever reason. You keep trying it, keep trying it, try different bolts, and yep. hopefully you get right. one eventually that works. So that's smart. So I do, I do, um, I put pin gulps on my, on my pin, so I'll put that on the right side when I put that leg on. But this one just, nice. just goes straight in. That's what when people... Personal preference. Yeah. I generally put my pin gulps on the left side because I find that I always like punch my hand into the pin gulp when I'm trying to turn the power <laughs> on. And I've, I've literally broken pin gulps because, you know, I'm just this hulking dude. That's, uh... That doesn't... <laughs> That's pretty smart, actually. I used to have on the left, and then I switched to the, uh... These are like the ultimates. So I, yes. I switched to those, yes. and I was like, I should put it on the right-hand side, because my left-hand side kind of hangs out over here, and I always ran into it. Right. So... Right. It's all how, how you prefer. I use the, uh... On my games now, I have the, most of the, the collapsible ones. Yeah, those are the ones I yeah, had. On the... These are the ones that they pop off. Yep, yep. Ah, uh, cool. Uh, those are the ones that can like be painted and stuff yeah. too, right? So you can, I don't know if I can do it without it being on the game, but you can, yeah. Once I put it on the game, but this cup like pops off the bracket. So when you need to, right. uh, when you need to get in there and work on games and slide between, or when I move my streaming rig between games, they just pop off and I can get them pretty easily. Oh, cool. All right, so this is gonna go on. So here's another fun Easter egg. On the side that you're standing on, Kev, you have three tour posters that represent the three areas of the world where people designed and worked on the Guns N' Roses pinball machine. Oh. So you have the Chicago tour poster, okay. right? Which is where I'm from, where I live. You have the Nijmegen tour poster, which is the hometown of... J.P. DeWin? J.P. DeWin. Ah, he's, I was like, Guns I know one's going to be J.P. DeWin. I don't know who the third one is. Guns N' Roses played in Nijmegen um, in 2017. I think they might have played again there in 2018 um, in the Netherlands, and that is the hometown of J.P. DeWin. And then, if you look closely on the back box, you will see a tour poster for... I don't know if you can make it out. Uh... I mean, no, it's not Dubai. Yeah, I see the Dubai. I can't tell what the other one is as like far as location. All right. There is a picture of when they played. I don't know the exact city, but the poster is just a fantastic work of art, and I'm pretty sure Arian drew it of the Jersey Devil. Oh shoot! Nice. Okay, down at the bottom. Company. Yeah, I see it. Yep. Nice. There you go. Makes sense. A little, a little tribute to the uh, places around the world. That have developed uh, this game. And actually, I think we have the LA poster on there too, um, which is one that I that I requested. I think that's right by your hands right now. Okay. Um, oh yeah, it's the, it's the lady. Um, and Dane Henry Jr. is the artist who did the playfield on this game. Okay. So you will see him there. So I was wondering. I was wondering if the his hometown. If the playfield was the same uh, artist, but it's a different artist. Different artist. There were actually four artists who worked on this game with me. So we have Arian Schuler, who did the art package for the LE cabinet and the CE cabinet. We have Dean Henry Jr., who did the artwork field on all three models. We have J.P. DeWin, who is art director, um, who helped Dane grow as an artist, um, guiding him on how playfield design works, sort of thing. And then um, Mark Molitor, sorry, actually there's five artists. Mark Molitor is our in-house artist who did the entire standard edition art package, which I won't ruin it for you now, Kevin, but people will have seen it by the time this video airs. It's awesome. And the fifth artist that worked on it now, um, Jesper Abels, who is the apprentice to J.P. DeWin, um, did the collector's edition back glass. Nice. Well, I can see I see a little sneak peek of a back glass in there, <laughs> just peeking out on the side there. That was so the LE back glass was done by Dane. Okay. Dane Henry G, who did the playfield art. Nice. All right, so how do you do this single-handedly? So I have I have a, one of the Harbor Freight lift carts. 
and I put it in front of the game while it's on the pallet, lower the front legs down onto it, and then just jack it up on the on the lift cart. So nice. There we go. Whatever you do, never, ever, ever cut that strap. No, you don't want to do that. Until your game has all four legs on it. So I will admit, I had a hard time choosing which art package to put on which model. Oh, so you got to make that choice, huh? Yes. I mean, it was... Me who determined which art, you know, the three different styles. I worked with Slash a lot on, um, you know, showing him art the whole time. He gave awesome feedback every step of the way. Um, but trying to figure out, because all three art packages came out amazingly. Um, so actually, on Telegram, posted a poll amongst all my coworkers on which model do you think should go on the limited and which which art package do you think should go on the standard and um, the collector's was set and the collector's edition is themed um, as everyone already knows uh after the appetite for destruction album it's guns and roses fans that is what they collect you know when they have a leather jacket that's appetite for destruction themed you know it's a 600 dollars leather jacket it sells out in 10 minutes um, just because that's what GNR fans collect. So that was directly from Slash. So, you know, if you're going to make a collector's edition, a super high end, make it Appetite because that's the album that, you know, that's the first album. Everyone loves it. And that's what uh, super collectors want. So. That's amazing. But, but it was up in the air. I mean, like, originally my concept was having the tour poster version for the standard edition. Because um, it seems more of what, like the the tour poster setup I have there, like on the brick walls. Mm -hmm. um, that that reminds me of like a dive bar where you have gig posters showing up. Like, I wanted that to be originally on the standard. But then I, I convinced myself the reason to put it on the limited edition is because this is the cumulative work of hundreds, if not more, man hours of labor put into art, right? Yeah. That all of these artists who spent dozens of hours individually on their posters, and we put this culmination of all their work together. And then the standard edition artwork, which is the uh, monsterized Roadsters art package from Mark, um, it's just fantastic colors. I think it really pop um, in arcades mm. and in bars and things like that, so. Nice. So I, d I have to admit, I just snuck a peek, because Everybody's been speculating about that upper left area of the of the play field based on that picture. <laughs> and you haven't seen I it yet. I just saw right? what it is. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, that's cool. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let me get the, I'll get the lift card out. We'll give you the walk around with it on legs, but without the back box up yet. All right. So this is legs on. Everything up right. Wow, look at that. What a beautiful game. I've been thinking too, so I got my, my JJP row over here, and I'm kind of out of room, so I'm going to have to reconfigure if I want to keep all four of them together now. Hmm. So. Have to find a new home for <laughs> Neil Geo. I know, that's what everybody says has to go next, but I love it. So, there you go, there's, there's back backs down, legs on. What's in here on the front? So here's, uh, I'm number, it's board on 920. That was, what, just like 10 days ago? 10 days ago. Cranking it out of the factory, nice. In the front. All right. What's very interesting is by the time people see this video, right, on Wednesday 10, seven, I think is when this video is being shown for the first time, there are gonna be other customers who have their game already. Killed. What? Come on, you guys are you, yep. you guys have been ready for this, right? We are ready, sir. That's awesome. It is interesting talking to you like we're in the future right now. <laughs> I know, because you're telling me things that I don't know, but I will know by right. the time everybody sees this. Yep. And like, so like people will have seen the play field and everything before I'm seeing it here. Yes. <laughs> but what, but what's really cool is like you've never seen this play field, and it's. 
or this art package or any part of this. So. All right, so I've got the, this is, you need this tool next to lock the back box down. You want to take all these little yep. pieces of cardboard off. Right, those pieces of cardboard prevent the uh, strap from biting into your cabinet artwork. Okay, I got all those off. Stick that in my pocket. And I'll do it from this side so you guys can see it as we go. Ready? Here we go. Oh, that's heavy. There we go. I haven't seen it yet. How's it look, all right? <laughs> Good. All right. All right, one thing before you lock that okay. down, make sure the uh, shipping foam that covers the play field is not stuck underneath. Okay, okay. Got it. Then you just give this a good turn, and yep. you're good to go. All right. It's almost play field time. Almost. You said there's a protective cover here. Explicit mode turned off, it says. What? Explicit mode? Explicit mode is turned off. From the factory. It's probably for the best, right? It is for the best. <laughs> but it's in there. Uh, it's in there. It is absolutely in there, and Kevin, I fully expect you will turn oh, it yeah, on. Oh yeah, it's going. It's turning on. I may have to turn it off for some of the streams, but it'll it'll we'll give a taste of everything. Yes. Uh, wow. So it's uh, Guns and Roses. So is it officially Guns and Roses not in this lifetime? Is that the official title of the yes. of the pinball machine? Okay, I didn't know that. Yep. Until just right now. Yep. I see some skeletons. I see um, lights. Pyro. So everybody's been speculating about pyro. That is pyro on the insert. Um, yes, it is. So there's a, the world map here with, I assume, everybody's, uh, all their locations where they played concerts, right? Yes. Yep. So I went through originally when I was designing it and came up with all the locations they played and put lights in for as many as I could. Um, and there are 53 inserts in just that map. Wow. There you go. And not just any inserts. You know, there's 53 RGB LEDs so yeah, so underneath. I've seen people speculating that uh, those are going to be like the lighters of the people in the crowd and things like that. But no, it's actually yep. a map where, with, with location. But that's, that's going to look amazing. All right, I want to. I want to get into it. All right, I gotta get the keys off. Where's my? I need my clippers to get this. What else do you notice right away? Lockdown bar. Oh, there's a button. There's a button. Here, it's the hundred percent continues for my for Eric's JJP uh, buttons. Yep, love my action button. We had a uh, we had a poll going in the Buffalo Pinball Discord about will there be an action button, and I did a breakdown by designer, and you were at a hundred percent, but you had only done one. <laughs> so the streak continues. <laughs> Still at 100%. So, I love the risk reward of the action button. I do too. Oh man. It, we were, there was debate about um, the action button, do you like it or do you not? I was like, I like it, like, I like the action button when it's done well, implemented well, and that, and it makes sense, and it, it, it taunts you at the right times to take your, your hands off the flippers. It's like, do I want to do this right now or not? Exactly. It's all about risk reward, right. man. It's all about risk reward. So let's take this out. Kevin, if you would be so kind as to, when you remove the glass, close the door. Um, read out that it, <laughs> yep, close the door, of okay. course. Um, we tell people to close the door because there is, you know, glass can can flex ever so slightly. And if you're pressing down on your Invisiglass when your door is open and you slide it out, that door will scratch your Invisiglass. You do not want that. No, you do not. It'll make you a very sad person. <laughs> so what did you want me to read? Uh, I want you to read the explicit content notice okay. after you've removed it from your game. I put it there under the glass so that people would have to read it. Oh yeah, it's like st have stuck to, to the glass. Yep. Okay. It says, explicit mode turned off. This game is set up for family-friendly mode out of the box. You must change the settings enable to enable explicit mode. Explicit mode features explicit songs not available in family mode. It's so easy, Mr. Brownstone, get out to get me, coma, double talk and jive, explicit audio calls and video clips. 
And it says, to change the settings, open the coin door, hit enter button to enter diagnostics, go to full menu, go to settings, go to game settings, under the general header, allow adult content change to yes. Note the game will reboot, saving this change. So tell, tell me a little about all that. Right. So there are six songs that you will not be able to play if your game is not set on adult settings. Those songs just will not be available to the user if your song, if your game is set on family-friendly mode. Because those songs are explicit, I did not want to put radio edit versions of songs in this game. So those songs just will not be playable if you do not enable your adult settings. All right. And also you'll miss out on about half of the studio time that I spent with Melissa Reese and Duff McKagan and Slash when we recorded our explicit voice calls. All right, I just learned that all three of them are in the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I kind of assumed Slash was involved. Uh, yes. Everybody else was a was a, a question mark. So how how involved was Slash in the band in the creation of this game? Um, Kevin, I am not exaggerating when I say I literally talk to Slash, if not every day, then every other day. <laughs> while I was designing this game. That's amazing. <laughs> How cool is that, just being able to bring up Slash and be like, dude, we're going to have a pinball machine, let's right. go on. And literally, like, I would text him, and he'd text me back in 10 minutes or less every single time. And, you know, sometimes I'd just, like, throw in there, like, hey, man, where are you at today? He's like, well, I'm in Germany today, and uh, we're playing a show tonight. And one time I'm like, man, I need to get you on Skype so we can talk about this thing. Um, you know, whatever it was, I don't remember. And he calls me up and he's just like laying in his hotel bed. And I'm like, well, this is a little <laughs> weird, dude. He doesn't have a shirt yeah. on, you know? And I'm like, uh, what's going on inside? He's like, yeah, it's 4 a.m. because I'm in Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, we just finished a gig. Uh, but what do you need to talk about? I'm like, yeah, let's go into these, uh, this pinball art or whatever it was, <laughs> you know, that I was talking about. And he's just like holding his phone up, right? He's like, <laughs> like we, yeah, okay, I could do that. Yeah, if we do this, this. And I'm like, all right, man, that's, we'll do that's it. That's amazing. Cool. Like, we could have talked about this later, but if you want to talk now, that's fine. <laughs> right, right. All right, so I assume we take this foam block out of here. I got a piece of foam out. Um, I'd recommend getting the glass out from in front of the okay. game and pulling the play field to service position one. To just make it a little easier to pull that foam out. Sure. Ooh, the, the lockdown or the apron is nice and, uh, and powder coated too. It is. And what's fun about the apron there? Um, the rule cards that you see are magnetic. What? Oh yeah, look at that. So if you if you are satisfied, you don't want to see free play or whatever, and you want to see the artwork underneath, just take that off. Throw it in your cash box. No tools required. That's good stuff. And if you want it on there, just. Plop. One in there. Boop. Looking good. All right, so just take this off. <laughs> nothing yep. fancy. Uh, nothing too fancy. Squeeze a little bit around where Axel's hanging out there, the skeleton. Uh, I should be able to pull it out after that. There we go. Bam. Woo! Bam. All right, <laughs> Kevin. What do you see, my All friend? right, I see a, a guitar upper play field. What, what's going on here? All right, let's put this back in so I can get the proper view of it here. So let's let's give you the, the play field cam here. All right, so we got Slash's hat. Uh, we got a, a, a record that spins around here. Yep, we have... a platinum record. Oh, that spins around. What record do you have there? That's the uh, Chinese Democracy album. The Chinese Democracy album. Did you know that Guns N' Roses had six records that went platinum? Including Chinese democracy. Including Chinese democracy. So are those, are, those, five are those different on every game? They sure oh, are. Oh, look at that. It is a random album, a random platinum album that gets put into each game. Nice. So you could have Chinese democracy, you could have Spaghetti Incident, you could have Illusion 1, Illusion 2, you could have uh, Appetite, and I think uh, GNR Lives is the other platinum nice. record. So it could be one of those six platinum records on your um spinning record toy how cool is that i got so we got this is a drumstick ramp is that what that is that is a real vader drumstick ramp oh, shit <laughs> <laughs> so frank ferrer who is the face that you see right there, okay 
um, is the drummer for Guns N' Roses. And Frank is sponsored by Vader. He has his own brand of sticks called the Thunder Chucker. Because <laughs> Frank is this big beast of a guy who can really lay into some drums. So he had to get extra thick, strong maple sticks. And they branded them the Thunder Chuckers. And so I got hooked up with Vader. And I got hooked up with Frank. And we talked a lot. And the dude was so excited to have his sticks featured in this game. Um, and what was extra cool on the Collector Edition version, I got Frank to sign the sticks for every Collector what? Edition version of the game. Oh my God, that's good. All right, so let's, let's give a, a tour of the play field. We'll start at the top and work our way around. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we got the, the Thunder Chuckers over here. They're looking good. Um, and then we got the right ramp that feeds those. There's a target at the top and what looks like a camera at the back? It is a fully articulating two-axis spotlight. Whoa! So, <laughs> what? There's, and there's more than one of them. There is more than one of them. Oh my god. And there's flashes in the back. Oh my god. What's... Those are more than just flashes, my friend. Right, um... Each one of those hexagons you see has six RGB LEDs behind it. Wow. And then, and, uh, so that's going to be a screen in the back, like, like concert footage kind of stuff? Is, that is the screen that would normally appear above the stage. Wow. <laughs> I'm taking it all in. So we got symbols on the pop bumpers. We got mm -hmm. the axle. And, and why, don't you, why don't you give a little push on, on those symbols there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They actually cling. They move. Oh, so they these... actually make. Oh. So you got a hi hat. And you've got a rider symbol. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. So you got um, the Guns N' Roses logo. So that's like the bass drum down here. And then mm -hmm. uh, some other drums up here. Uh, you got the axle lanes at the top of the magnet, it looks like. Yep. Um, what else do I see? Obviously, Slash's top hat is a, kind of the, the prominent play field. Uh, feature yep. here. And there is a uh, spotlight inside Slash's hat that points down at that platinum record. Oh, so it's going to make it just light up yep. amazing. It just makes it just shimmer. It's awesome. That's great. Um, so then we're working our way over. We got the uh, the Gibson guitar ramp here. Um, right. The Slash Gibson guitar. How do we get there? Um, so oh, it looks like there's a diverter that can go either to the upper play field or down this ramp. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, what do you think of those return ramps, Kevin? They're not your traditional. Yeah, I was looking at these like, like. So what's the story with like? Because typically you see more like this. Right. And you've got. Uh, what I really wanted to do is I really wanted to create catwalks. Oh. Look at that. So you got you got your catwalk ramps coming back to the to the and stuff. That's amazing. Yep. Oh, and I didn't see this from when I was standing on the other side, but now that I'm over here, I see there's a behind the flipper shot over here. There sure is. And not in this lifetime, something happened in here. Can't quite tell. A diverter. That is a ball diverter. Oh. And that ball diverter, when the ball comes rolling down the drumsticks, when that diverter fires, it diverts and goes back up the play field shortly, just a little mm -hmm. bit. And then rolls back down to feed that flip. Oh, nice. So it's just like a alley-oop, comes up, and then comes back down, and you can nail, you can nail it. it. Yep. Or it'll feed to the uh, the right in lane there. Yep. Um, all right. So we got, we got the Gibson guitar, the Slash Gibson guitar, the upper play field with Slash on there. Um, Axel. Er, sorry, Axel. Um, yep. That you feed from this left ramp. Is that how it gets up there? Okay, left ramp up to here. It's got. Hmm. There's a there's a hole in the back. Mm -hmm. There's a vertical up kicker back there. Okay. All right. That vertical up kicker kicks it up to Duff's playfield feature, which is the Fender headstock uh, kinetic ball diverter system that feeds a ball from one path to the four strings of the bass. Wow, look at that. So it's like a, a triple upper play field. Yes. <laughs> or double. We have an upper play field and a mini play field on top of the <laughs> upper play field. 
<laughs> if one play field wasn't enough, you got another one on top of it. That's amazing. Right. You got play field and play field inception. <laughs> it's amazing. So then that can come down one of two ways based on how it feeds out of here. It looks like. Right. Yep. Yep. So those four strings of the base uh, create three ball paths that the ball can roll down, and then it feeds either the leftmost left in lane or the right in lane. Right, left, in. Line. So the, the the left two go to the left, and the right one goes mm -hmm. to the right. Yep. Okay. So we have an upper play, uh, uh, upper flipper loop. Uh, yep. That I think feeds around. What's it? Tell me, tell me what's going on there, because it looks like there's a couple things happening there. So it feeds an inner loop that is a jump shot um, that goes around the upper side of the of the playfield loop there. Okay. Uh, the geometry was tight back there, so I had to make it loop over um, the full orbit shot instead of just like colliding into it. Um, I didn't have the real estate to make it to make it just feed in, so I made a little ramp there that could jump over the orbit shots. So it's probably better viewable from the right side of the game if you look down from that corner. Yeah, yeah so there's a, right, right back here there's a little little jump. You would be able to see it yep. just standing in front of the game, but now that you pointed it out, I can see it. I should I didn't even note this. It's a standard body game, not a wide body game. Yes. Nice. So how how is uh your first game was obviously pirates, wide body game. Talk to me about the difference between designing a game in a wide body cabinet versus this one. This game is a lot faster. Okay. Um it is a quick shooter. It is like those ramps um, are just right back to you all the time, um, especially the standard edition version. It is so fast that it was it was a completely different gameplay, right? Um, Pirates is a very much a pinball game, and GNR feels much more like a flow ball, um, faster shooting game to me. Okay, so excellent. So you got the upper flipper here that you can shoot into the the saucer yep. or duff. And, and you shoot it into the lights target. Right here. And you can also shoot it into a backhand into the six ball Gibson lockup. Oh, yeah, look at that. And uh, I just noticed something that I was going to ask you about. Now got, I got distracted by all the other cool stuff. Oh, the upper flipper, there's like, it's open underneath it here. What's going on with yes, that? Yes, it is. So. Kevin, I grew up as an operator. I worked on games for a long, long time before I started designing them. And one of my frustrations is servicing games. It's hard to service games, you know, harder than it should be sometimes. So this upper play field, I wanted to be able to take off pretty easily. Um, so this upper play field comes off with four screws and the two nuts that hold on the base ramp. So that whole thing lifts straight up and that flipper mech is actually mounted on the main play field. Just has a long shaft that feeds it all the way through the mini play field. Um, and what's even better is all of the parts that you may need to service on that upper play field are accessible from underneath. Oh, no kidding. So that vertical up kicker, you can you can get to it. There's a hole in the main play field for you to get to that vertical up kicker, for you to get to that um, stand up target, and for you to get to the ten point switch. That's also there. Um, so that should all be serviceable. But if you do need to take it off, uh, you take off the two nuts that hold on the base ramp, and you take off four screws to take off the whole upper play field. Yeah, I think about the, I had a no fear at one point, and it had the, the big long shaft on the uh, mm -hmm. on the flipper that you would have to pull all the way out of it before you could get anything out of there. So right. yeah, that's awesome. Right. This, the play field just lifts right off around that. Okay, yeah, awesome, yeah, no kidding. All right. Um. Anything else? Should we fire it up and see it with the lights on? Um, did you notice the spinners that are on the I game? I did not. Spinners. All right. I'm looking at some. Left oh, yeah, orbit. Right, right. Oh, it's a pick. And center. It is a pick. Yeah. It's a guitar pick. Look at that. They're like. It is a polycarbonate guitar pick that when the light shines upon it, boy, does it look good. Oh, man. When, it, when you rip it and it's lit up, I bet it looks amazing. Uh huh. Wow. Mm hmm. Did you notice anything else in the game, Kevin? I mean, there's a lot to, uh, there's a lot to take in here. <laughs> there's a lot to take in, I'm, I'm sure. Um, once you power on the game, I think you will see what I'm... Uh, I don't know if I'm most proud of it, but I am very proud okay, of it. Okay, so power cords in the cash box, is that where it is? 
I hope so. <laughs> we did our job right. It's we're going to find out. If not, I have backups. Of it. If not, we're editing the video. <laughs> You'll never see this. Ooh, There's other whoa. goodies in there. I think too. I saw, did I see a Bluetooth connector in the... Did you? <laughs> did I? <laughs> you most certainly did if you looked at the cabinet controller board. If you looked at the Playfield extension board, you also saw a Wi-Fi dongle. Oh, that's what that is. This game ships with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. Wow. So you can straight up use the headphones you're using right now and hook them into the game to listen to it in surround on your Bluetooth headphones. And you will also be able to hook the game into Wi-Fi. You were one of the beta testers for us. I was. Um, and these games will automatically download updates with your permission and update games when we release code updates. Amazing. So all that work that we've done on the, on the older games, getting them up to speed on Wi-Fi, it's coming to, coming to market I'm on this standard. one. I'm standard with Guns N' Roses. Awesome. So we got to go up here if you want to see this. There's the cash box. We've got, we do have power cord. Look at that. Excellent. No editing required. Ooh. I don't want to put that on the playlist. Uh, we have pinballs and the goodie bag. So we have and the goodie. You have other additional pricing cards. Yeah. Yep. And what's nice about those pricing cards is they fit right into the magnetic holder. Oh, all right. See that? Yeah, I was wondering. So you can just pop that right in there. Nice. Some backup uh, uh, sling plastics, I assume, or sling rubbers. Yep. And yep. Some... Sling rubbers, sling plastics. And in the end, we have a collection of keychains. Guns and Roses pinball. Nice. I'll check those out. Uh, first thing we want to do is let's plug it in. I want to see this thing powered up. I'm ready. All right. Let's do this. Here we go. Your time to shine, Rockstar. So, who was that that did that call out? That was dark. Okay. Alright, so super skill shot. Alright, yeah, I got my rollovers here. Oh, alright, so it's a, there's a... Alright, okay. I was not expecting that. Did not see that target there. To have it roll back like that. <laughs> I should, I'll say I haven't leveled this game right in the gear. I just set it up, so... Um, let's get on. Ready to drop the base. He's doing art, man. <laughs> so good. There he is. He's going to be coming my left. That's me. That was flat. Richard here. So all the, uh, the players announced themselves when you hit their shots. Yep. That's a big right outlay. <laughs> right. So what should I go for next? Um, let's see, you need to get Richard or you need to get Slash? Okay, let's go Slash. So Richard is the inner. Yep, that's Slash. So he's ready to go now? Spin the spinner or some more to get slashed, and then I can start a song. Yep. Right. Oh, I spotted it by spelling jam. Yep. Get the action button. Get the action button. Oh, okay. Go 
way. Oh. You are playing. November Rain. November Rain. This is what you're supposed to do on the mini screen. Playing seconds worth of songs from that album. Okay. You reached three minutes worth of cumulative time played for an album. You qualified that album's mode. Each album mode is a unique uh, mode to play. It has original music created by Slash. And you play all four of those, and slash solo, and tour multi ball. You get to play the not this lifetime with you. Nice. Okay. All right. I, I just noticed you have lighting by the flipper, so I don't have to put any trough lights in here either. It looks great. Right. Okay. Right. right now, you are changing your current patch over here. Okay. Guitar. And tells you what those things do on the mini screen down below. There are, I think, 39 different patch awards. <laughs> um, and you, you earn a patch by completing the GNR inlay, which is the right left inlay. Okay. All right, let's go for it. So the beauty is I get to play this game. So this is my vacation. I'm taking like four days off just to play this game straight. Get it all straight before the before the stream. Although I, I am putting up a grand champ here, so I'm doing all right. Thanks. We're, oh, we lit a song. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, right. hit the action button. Okay. 
Yeah, which song did you want me to play? Live and let die. Got it. <laughs> Shoot the flashing orange shots to boost jackpot. Okay. Two yellow orange shots, three shots right now. Oh yeah, look at that. Don't get booed, cat. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was admiring the lights. Oh god! And I just, oh, give it back. Oh no. You're back. Well, there you Ready? Wow. <laughs> the shit is going out too. got him to stand in front of a green screen and um, make it look like he was holding the camera so that he could do selfies with people getting the high scores. How fun is that? Oh my god. Well, let's, let's bring it back here and uh, we'll close it out. I'm gonna, in the meantime, I'm gonna get the game set up, rigged up for, for proper streaming. Uh, Eric is gonna join me for the reveal stream later today. Um, but I can't wait to uh, dig into this game all weekend. It's going to be great. <laughs> I'm living in the past right now. You're going to see it way sooner than I am. Eric, uh, what do you have to say to, to close things out here? Um, I'm excited that people finally get to see this game, man. It's been a labor of love for, for it feels like forever, because COVID really derailed things. Um, moving our factory really you know, slowed down getting this game to market, but... It's happy. I'm really happy to see, you know, we had extra time to polish the code. Uh, you know, we all took games home during during the COVID crisis. So we just got to get all this extra stuff in there um, to make it perfect for, for everyone buying this game. So very happy and, that people get to find, finally see it. And uh, games are ready. You're probably shipping out games already at this point, right? By the time people games see this? have already left the factory. Oh, yeah. By the time people are seeing this... Um, Dozens and dozens of games have left our factory. Amazing. Well, I'm super excited for you guys. Can't wait to play more Guns N' Roses and show it to everybody out there at home. Uh, so tune in later today right here on YouTube to uh, to see more of it. Eric, thanks so much for uh, for joining me today. Right on, Kevin.